Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk about some eye anatomy that you'll need to know to pass your NCLE examination. So let's talk about the eye. First, let's start out by just kind of drawing the outer shell of the eye and working our way inward. Okay, so here we have the anterior of the eye, which is uh, most external to the environment, and the front is the cornea. Right, that's that clear refractive medium that we'll be talking a lot about. So, butting up to the cornea is the sclera. That's the tough, white, fibrous part of the eye, so if you're viewing me from the front, um, next to where my iris is visible with the color of my eye, you'll see the white. That is the sclera. And where the cornea and the sclera meet is referred to as the limbus or the corneal scleral limbus. It's a one to two millimeter junction where the cornea and the sclera will meet up. And what's interesting about the limbus is the sheets of collagen that compose the cornea, they're parallel, but at the limbus, they turn perpendicular and it kind of becomes opaque. It's very important that it has that white opaqueness to it because it doesn't permit the entry of light. Because if, think about if the eye was completely transparent like the cornea, it would let way too much light in and our retina wouldn't even know what to do with all that information. So let's work our way inward as I attempt to draw the eye. That'll work. Okay. So we know the cornea is the external most part of the eye. Of course, it has the tear foam in front of it. Now, this first chamber here is going to be referred to as the anterior chamber. And it's filled with aqueous humor. Um, between the cornea and the iris, anterior chamber, but between the iris and the crystalline lens, we have the posterior chamber or posterior chamber. And it as well is filled with aqueous humor. Now next to it here, the ciliary body, it's actually responsible for producing the aqueous humor, which will flow into the the anterior chamber and out through the trabecular meshwork and the, the canal of Schlem. So it's really, really interesting and it's, it's amazing how it's, it regulates the pressure so the eye overall maintains the same amount of pressure. So at the same inflow, it's having the same outflow. So working our way, so inward, so we have the sclera is the white fibrous part of the eye. So working inward, we have the choroid. And that's the middle, middle layer of the eye. It's dark brown in color. It's primarily a vascular layer, so it supplies a lot of nutrition for the eye. Then our innermost layer is the retina. And that's our light sensitive layer of the eye. That has all the photoreceptor cells. So we have approximately six to seven million cone photoreceptor cells, which are responsible for our our day vision, our color vision, our sharp central vision, and we have about 120 million rod photoreceptor cells, which are responsible for our night vision, our peripheral vision, seeing in different shades of gray. So while we're mentioning the retina, we have this spot here on the retina, referred to as the macula, and then within that we have the fovea centralis, and that's where most of the cone photoreceptor cells are. And that's why conditions such as macular de degeneration, where the um, degenerative condition of those photoreceptor cells is going to affect your central vision, your color vision, things like that. Because when light enters the eye, ideally we want it to focus right on the macula. And then back here in this chamber, we have the vitreous chamber filled with vitreous humor, 
and it pretty much gives the eye its shape. So it, it gives the eye a globe shape, it um, is clear, much like the aqueous fluid, so that when the light passes through, it's uninhibited. Alright, so kind of going back with the cornea now. So there's a lot of things we want to know about the cornea. Uh, primarily, the cornea supplies plus 43 diopters of strength. And that's really important to know. And, and interesting, if you think about the average contact lens or pair of glasses, might be a 2 diopter, 3 diopter prescription. And, and, you know, they're considerably thick. And if we think about the cornea, it's just a half a millimeter thick in the center and it's supplying plus 43 diopters of strength. The cornea will thin to about 0.1 millimeters towards the periphery near the limbus. Uh, and so the front surface of the lens, the cornea, is a convex shape. So the average is around plus 48.8 and the back being concave is more like a minus 5.8 and that kind of gives us that plus 43 average and that'll differ from individual to individual. So there are five layers to the cornea. The most anterior layer is the epithelium. The epithelium is known for healing or regenerating within 24 to 48 hours. Next, we have the Bowman's membrane. After that, we have the stroma. Now the stroma comprises 90% of the corneal thickness. If you were to have an abrasion that reached through to the stroma, it would scar. After the stroma, we have the decimates membrane, and then we have the endothelium, which is closest to the anterior chamber. So the endothelium is responsible for something called detergescence. And detergescence is the ability for the cornea to pump the aqueous fluid in and out of the cornea so it can maintain a state of relative dehydration. So the refractive medium of the eye are the cornea, which supplies roughly 43 diopters, plus 43, and then the crystalline lens, which supplies roughly plus 17 diopters of strength at rest. And it has an increased accommodative amplitude when we're converging to read things at near point. But what's important to know is that the tear film, which rests on top of the cornea, is also very crucial to our ability to refract or bend light. The tear film is comprised of three distinct layers. The outermost layer is the lipid layer and is produced by the meibomian glands. And lipid is like fat, so if you can think of it, it kind of makes sense because the, the purpose of the lipid layer is to prevent evaporation of the next layer, which is the aqueous layer, which comprises most of the tear film and it also supplies the nutrition, the various ions, things that the cornea needs. The innermost and third layer of the tear film is the mucoid layer. And, and that also makes sense because it's, it's like mucus. So mucoid, mucus, and it's produced by goblet cells in the conjunctiva. And its purpose is to turn the cornea, which is kind of hydrophobic, into a hydrophilic I love water state because it's sticky and it allows the tear film to adhere to the cornea. The cornea receives nutrition through three primary ways because, amazingly, the cornea does not have vessels growing throughout it. You can imagine if the cornea did have vessels growing in it, we wouldn't be able to see because light that was entering through our eyes would be impeded. So we would get shadows or it would be dark. So we have, we are able to receive nutrition to our living tissue, the cornea, in three other ways. And they are through the tear film through vessels that end in loops at the scleral limbus, and also through the aqueous fluid which is pumped in through the endothelium of the cornea.